Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Beckoning the Broncos. It is Wednesday, September 28th. I am Kim Becker. We'll get everybody going in here, and it looks like we are live on all channels pretty quickly. Check, check, check. All right. Good morning, everybody, and a welcome to Beckoning the Broncos. I am Kim Becker. Welcome in, and boy, oh boy, welcome to the first three weeks of the Denver Broncos season, of the NFL season. Quite the roller coaster, I'm sure you are all well aware of and share those same feelings. Jeremy, welcome, welcome in. Sorry for the delay a little bit here. Um, that was my fault. So thank you all so much for being here today, though. Um, we're going to chat about the last couple of weeks because I was not able to make last Wednesday either. So interested to see um, how you guys are all feeling. Like I said, it's been quite the roller coaster when it comes to the Denver Broncos and our emotions and what we were expecting, or at least what I was expecting. I can't speak for everybody, but um, kind of a scary evening on Sunday, if you're anything like me, watching it and expecting one thing and seeing another. Um, I know it's it's been tough for the Denver Broncos to get their offense in sync. We all know that. That's no secret. It's been challenging for me to listen to the press conferences afterwards. Um and to see the defeat really in Nathaniel Hackett's eyes, you can really see that. And it it makes me sad, to be completely honest, um, because we've seen so much energy in him throughout training camp and throughout the preseason. And it's this last one, boy, oh boy, the press conferences on uh, Monday were tough to watch, tough to see how tired disappointed he looked. Um, but one thing that I really wanted to talk about today is that, yes, he looks defeated. Yes, he looks like this was a challenge he maybe wasn't quite ready for. I know he did say, you know, no one said this was going to be easy, which is very true. I'm sure no one told him it was going to be easy. I'm sure he did. He knew it wasn't going to be easy. And you do have to have that optimism and that energy coming into a brand new organization, a brand new challenge like that. So I don't fault him for being the way that he was during training camp and during the preseason. But And I'm not faulting him right now either, but I just think that he's slowly realizing, maybe quickly realizing, that this was a bigger feat than maybe he had prepared for publicly with us. Um, because I know that we got to see all the positive energy and all the, the positive sides of things and the optimism. And um, now we're really seeing the product that we were not expecting to see. And of course, there are so many factors going into that. I don't need to remind you all of that. You all know, you know, there was no preseason for our starters. The Russ is in a brand new situation, a brand new offense, this and that. But um, the thing with Hackett is that he went and he hired, you know, this executive or this advisor and Jerry, and he said that he he made a solution. He knew that there was an issue. And he said, I knew I had something I needed to address and I addressed it. So his ego is aside. It's not like he has too much pride to go and get someone to help him out. So I thought that that was really cool. I thought that that move just showed that he is in this for the right reasons, that he knew there was an issue that he had to address when it come to game management and clock management. And he wanted to address it so that he could get the best performance out of his guys and especially out of Russell Wilson and the play calling that he knew he needed to do. So I was very impressed with that move. Um, I think that hiring an advisor like that, especially someone who has so much experience as Roseburg does, it just brings in someone that can help, can be that extra set of eyes and can take the pressure off of him in the, the capacities that doesn't need to be on him. So I thought that was a great move. And I thought that spoke volumes when it came to Hackett and his knowledge about what needs to be fixed. So he literally saw a problem and he went out and got a solution. And that was something besides the defeat in his eyes, besides how tired that he looks, besides the awful offensive situations we have seen the Denver Broncos put themselves in. I just thought that that was a really cool thing to do and a really smart thing to do if he knew that he was investing in the future of this team and the future of this organization. And I'm sure that he had the support of everybody in that front office. So I don't know about you guys. I think that that just spoke volumes. I think we can put pride aside. Everyone that's given him, you know, slack about, oh yeah, he needed help. He couldn't be a head coach, this and that. I think we got to give him some, we got to give him some grace here. We got to give him some patience a little bit. And that's just my take on it. I don't know what you guys think. I'll pop over into the comments here and just say thank you to everyone that is over here. Travis Hudson says that shirt is fire. Thank you very much. Not, will not reveal where I got it, but thank you. <laughs> Um, and yeah, this is one of my favorites, actually. Um, the team has similar ones. So 
Jeremy, also, I saw you pop in here. Welcome, Kim. Great to see you. Great to see you. I know I missed you guys the last couple of weeks, but um, excited to be back here today. Lawrence Rivera, didn't Peyton say he wasn't going to rebuild and start fresh? No one expected this. Did he say he wasn't going to rebuild and start fresh? I mean, technically, we're not in – the Denver Broncos are not in a total rebuild and start fresh, but I don't know if no, no one expected this, Lawrence. I mean, I, I feel – like maybe us at Mile High Huddle or this group here, we were so excited about it and we had a lot of optimism and high expectations. But if you really crack down and sit down and look at what happened, I mean, the Seattle game, to be quite honest with all of you, I was not as surprised at the outcome of the Seattle game. Um, the Seahawks knew that this was going to be the, one of their biggest games of the season. All of the Seattle fans knew that this was going to be a big game. They brought the noise. They brought the energy. They were hungrier than the Denver Broncos were that night, and the Broncos starters had not played in the off, in the preseason together. So to ex expect this second and third game against the Texans and the 49ers, I don't really know what I was expecting after that first Seahawks game, to be honest. I mean, that was hard. I was – a little defeated after that as well. The Texans game, again, first home game, the booing from the crowd could not have set well with the Broncos players that were out there with the coaches on the sideline. Then that's when Nathaniel Hackett made his move and hired Jerry. So that was a solution. The 49ers defense was the number one defense going into Sunday night's game. We knew that they were a very, very good defense. We knew that they were going to pressure Russell Wilson as much as they could. And we all saw that, you know, he was literally smothered in the pocket. I think it was like 67% of the time or something like that. Just crazy. We knew that there were some offensive line issues going into this season. And I think we're seeing a little bit of that. Again, we have played the this past performance on Sunday night against the San Francisco 49ers, like I said, was against a really good defense. So I I was expecting to see the offense struggle a little bit on that one. I wasn't expecting Russell Wilson to not make as many explosive plays as he has made. Again, I think that's a situation with Hackett and Russell. I think that's a trust thing. I think that's just a getting into a groove thing. So I will say that, yes, no one expected them to have these types of games, the first three. But when you really crack it all down and pull back the layers and look at the factors that's going into what we're seeing in these games, I don't think it's too far-fetched, you know, um, to see that we're that the Denver Broncos are having some struggles here. And I don't know. It's not – easy to watch. We all know that, you know, it's not like this is a, a, a fun situation to sit down and be like, oh yeah, we're going to just smother these guys. You know, we're going to absolutely demolish their, our, their opponent. No, that's not happening. The Denver Broncos are not going to have easy games going forward. This next game coming up on Sunday, the first divisional matchup against the Las Vegas Raiders is going to be a challenge. I will tell you right now, I honestly don't expect the Broncos to come away with an easy win in this one, if a win at all. The Las Vegas Raiders are so hungry. They are 0-3. They are so hungry. They will be playing at home. This is going to be a massive challenge for the Denver Broncos to go into Allegiant Stadium and come out with the win. I'm not expecting them to do that in this week. I think we're going to need another week, maybe even two, to see the Denver Broncos really sink together and jive. So, again, I'll stop on my tangent for one second, go back into the comments and say thank you to all of you and see what's going on over here. Um, Jamie says, I'm happy with a two and one record three games in. Absolutely. At the end of the day, a win is a win and the Denver Broncos have two of them. So, um, yeah, for sure. I, I agree. That's definitely a great, great place to start. If this is the way that we're starting here with the Denver Broncos. Um, but I, I know that a lot of you are talking about the bullying from the national media, quote unquote, a lot of the national media, just saying that, um, you know, this is not what, they were hoping to see out of Hackett and Russell. Um, again, it's it's the whole preseason thing that I keep going back to. And I don't know what the answer is when it comes to the preseason and your starters. I have no idea. I don't think anybody does. So if you hear people say, oh, yeah, they absolutely should have played the starters, no one knows. Because it's a risk-reward type of situation, obviously. And I don't think that anyone will ever have solid evidence to say, yeah, the – Denver Broncos should have played their starters. And also it doesn't matter. So we um, honestly don't even need to go back into the past like that. But no one knows the answer. Everyone's just talking right now. You hear the the players after these, these tough wins or the one loss in Seattle. And 
their answers are all the same. That's why it's challenging for me to listen to these press conferences because we're not getting any real substance out of them and we're not going to, and we don't need to. They don't owe us that. The coaching staff, I'm sure, is going through a ton of different conversations at the facility. The players are going through a ton of different conversations. We don't know what's being said, but we do hear them all say they need to execute. And that's 1,000% what we see as spectators. They need to execute when they're in the red zone. They say they have all of these plays and these plans and these situations, right? Hackett's being very creative with Russell Wilson and the offense. Well, we aren't seeing them being executed because we're playing tough opponents. It... I don't know what else to say at this point. It sucks. It sucks to watch. It sucks when we had such high hopes for the beginning of this season, but I just think it's going to take a little bit of time. And I think that's exactly what you can see in the eyes of Nathaniel Hackett and what he said about Russ on, on Monday. He said, Russ is in a new situation too. Russ is in a brand new offense. He's in a brand new uniform, brand new teammates around him, brand new coaching. It's all brand new. So yes, Russ has a decade of experience in the league. He is technically a veteran, but it's still a new situation without a preseason. And it is hard to win games. I don't know who I'm convincing at this point, you guys. I know I'm not convincing you. So maybe I'm convincing myself. <laughs> the Joe Show featuring Joe Cardile. Hello, Joe. Welcome in. New owners, newer GM, new HC, new OC, new to us QB. It takes all new relationships, time to mold, to learn to work together. All good things take time. That is exactly it, Joe. Thank you. And again, I'm not convincing you guys. I think I'm convincing myself. But I appreciate you saying that, and I completely agree. And I think they all see that too. You know, it's... um. It's just, it's hard to watch, but that's where we're at right now. And it's going to be really hard, like I said, going into Sunday's game. Um, I I have a lot of anxiety about that. Gary, good morning, Kim. Missed you at the meet and greet. Go Broncos. Oh my gosh, I will absolutely take a minute to ask you all how that meet and greet went. I was so bummed that I couldn't go. Chad tried to get me to go multiple times and Unfortunately, I just could not make it work out, but they really were hoping I could. And I was really hoping that I could. So I, I really hope you guys all had a great time. I saw pictures and videos. It looked awesome. It looked like a beautiful day. What a night. I'm sure you were all watching with a lot of anxiety like I was, but um, being there in person, I hope was very special. And I'm glad you were all able to do that. I, I, I love seeing the community and seeing you guys show up for Mile High Huddle and for your Denver Broncos. Charlie, you made me feel better. I hope so, Charlie. Thank you. So there were people in the chat like you, Charlie, that I'm making feel better, not just myself. I appreciate you for saying that. Um, it's hard, you guys. And, you know, you sometimes you have to laugh so you don't cry, right? We've, we've had a tough five, six years watching this team, hoping that we'll get something um, with substance out of it. But again, like I said, let's not have our expectations set too high for Sunday. And that's a really a win-win situation if we can do that, because that way, if they do come out with a very easy win, we're very pleasantly surprised. And that way, if they don't, we weren't expecting them to. I'm honestly not expecting them to win this game. This is the first game that I probably would say that if, hypothetically, I'm, I'm not placing anything on them because I don't, but um, I probably would put the... I would expect the Raiders to win this one. And if you guys disagree with me, I'd love to hear why, but I'll, I'll kind of dive into my reasoning for that one here. Um, I took some time to look at Derek Carr versus Russell Wilson heading into this, this week four matchup. And honestly, the numbers are pretty close when it comes to quarterbacks and to whole team stats. But I think just taking all of the black and white X's and O's away from things, uh, the atmosphere in Allegiant Stadium is going to be very, very tough to play in. Um, when you look at the level of sync that the Denver Broncos are on right now, I just don't think they're quite there at that caliber that they're able to go in there and have a successful matchup on Sunday. And like I said, the Raiders are going into week four, zero oh, and three. It's going to be... Um, very hard to beat an 0-3 team at home when you know how hungry Derek Carr is. And the weapons that the Raiders have are high. Obviously, Devontae Adams is performing at massive levels. He's got 17 receptions and 189 yards, whereas Cortland Sutton is our, you know, our top guy right now with 19 receptions and 291 yards, which is great. But when you just look at everything else, okay, we'll, ho we'll hop into this. Um, it's going to be really tough. So, 
Go Broncos. Yes, let me say that right now, Laura. I agree with you. Go Broncos. I'm still rooting for the Broncos. I'm still rooting for them, but I'm just looking ahead um, at this. And I do see people say heading for 0-4 with the Raiders. That would be fantastic. Like I said, win-win situation. My expectations aren't going to be high. Lawrence, Raiders need a win and they put up points, but I'm just praying we win. That'll be a hard loss. It'll be a very hard loss for the Denver Broncos. And I always was looking ahead at this season thinking that that first game against the Seahawks would be a really hard loss, but I think this one would be even worse for the Denver Broncos. This is going to be a really hard loss, especially because somehow the Denver Broncos are sitting atop the AFC West with the Chiefs, and I obviously the Chargers and the Raiders have had a tough start to the season as well. But yeah, this one will be very telling. The first divisional matchup, it is just eek. But anyway, okay. So total first downs between the Broncos and the Raiders. I'm going to run through some stats here just so we can see where both of these teams really line up heading into week four. Broncos have a total of 54 first downs throughout their first three games where the Raiders have 62. Pretty close there. Third down conversions. The Broncos have had 46 third downs and only 17 of them were converted into a new set of downs. That's tough. Um... So that's third down. That's not even fourth down. That's not even uh, – that's where I think we need to really see some improvement with the Denver Broncos is those third down conversions because that is so critical, especially when we are heading into fourth downs and we don't quite have a staff and a coaching staff that is completely 1,000% trustworthy of who they have out on the field and what they can do. When it comes to fourth down conversions, we've only gone for two. The Denver Broncos have only gone for two, and they've only succeeded in one of those. Um, the Raiders have had 34 third down conversions and have converted 12 of them, whereas on fourth down, they are four of five. So they are taking more risks when it comes to fourth down. Obviously, that could mean many different things. They could have better field position. They could have lesser yards to go to get that first down. But I think that just shows that um, they're a little bit more confident in Derek Carr and what they have out there, which makes sense. He's also been with the team for nine years. Derek Carr has been with the Las Vegas Raiders or the Oakland Raiders, whatever you want to say, um, for the last nine years. So he is more familiar with who he's got out there and the system. Obviously, a new head coach, so things will change. But again, he is more comfortable than Russell Wilson. New, 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 new. Russell Wilson is in the situation that is new, 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 new. Everything is new. So... We're comparing, but we're also remembering exactly what's going on here. Um, the offensive total yards, very, very similar. The Broncos have 1,044, whereas the Raiders have 1,040. They're four, four yards different. So when it comes to the offenses, they are really performing and producing at similar capacities, whereas, I, like I just said, Derek Carr has spent a heck of a lot longer with this team than Russell Wilson has. Um, total passing yards, the Raiders with Carr is at 854. Russell Wilson is at 743. That's a number that I want to see absolutely skyrocket throughout these next couple day, couple games because Russell Wilson has not been showing us what he can do, and I don't know exactly the reason why that is. Obviously, a lot of it is play calling and what's going on out on the field, what defense they're going up against, but I really do hope that we can see Russell Wilson use that arm and complete some more um, attempts as we head into week four and five, and I'm sure that all of you will agree with that one. Uh, field goals were seven of nine. The Denver Broncos are seven of nine. The Raiders are eight of eight. Kind of irrelevant at this point, whatever. Touchdowns. The Denver Broncos only have three touchdowns going through the first three weeks. That's another issue, and it goes along with the um, improvement that I personally would like to see with Russell Wilson and um, some throwing touchdowns there. Obviously, that first one to Jerry Judy was great to see this season. We all knew that he needed to get into the end zone, but we need to see him get into the end zone many more times. Jeremy, we left five touchdowns on the field in Seattle. God. Thanks, Jeremy. But you're right. The 49ers are maybe the best defense in the league. Correct. The offense statistically looks worse than reality. Absolutely. Like I said, um, it's very hard for us, for the national media, for anyone to look at everything and have a, have the answer. That's what makes it fun, though, too. Um, but yes, statistically, the Denver Broncos do not look great. Statistically, the Las Vegas Raiders don't look that great. The Las Vegas Raiders are 0-3. The Denver Broncos are 2-1. So that should speak a little bit more. But you do have to look at these opponents. The San Francisco 49ers defense is incredible. Um, but also their offense should have produced more. And you could see that in Kyle Shanahan's eyes as well. 
Uh, it was a weird situation for the 49ers, obviously, with Trey Lance suffering that injury and then Jimmy Garoppolo coming in. But Garoppolo has had a lot of experience with that team um, and a lot of experience I guess going up against Russell Wilson, but it doesn't really matter because they're not on the field at the same time. Laura, thank you so much for your support. Appreciate you. Love seeing my women in here. So thank you um, so much for being in here today and supporting us over here at Mile High Huddle. Um, thank you so much for your support and for being here and for chiming in and seeing what everybody else is chatting about over there. <laughs> I see people saying we're not going to lose. Thanks. Okay. I appreciate that. And again, I'm not saying that I hope we do. I'm just looking at black and white. Thank you all for telling me and reminding me that statistics are do look far worse than um, what we're seeing. I think the problem is we just have not seen this team jive together yet, and we just have to get this team to that level, and then we will be able to see exactly what we were all expecting in the offseason. So that's what I am crossing my fingers for. Um, again, it's it's – a scary thing and I'm trying not to set the bar too high for all of us but um one tweet that I did see Benjamin Albright say which made a lot of sense and it's something where it's hard to compare quarterbacks we all have different opinions of quarterbacks and what they've done in this league and what they've done for their team Aaron Rodgers is a quarterback that I truly really respect um I know there's a lot of fluff on the outside world about him and a lot of people have opinions about him and what he does whatever I think he's a great quarterback I think he knows what he needs out of his team to succeed. But um, Albright tweeted a a stat the other day, and he said in 2019, Aaron Rodgers was with the same offense, with Nathaniel Hackett and his offense there, who's a quarterback's coach, obviously, whatever. Um, but he said that in 2019, Rodgers had the same offense, started with 647 throwing yards and 62% completion through the first three games. Similar to Russell Wilson's stats. So it – and then it, Aaron Rodgers really succeeded throughout the 2019 season after that. So I think it just is going to take a little bit of time for everyone to get on the same page. And again, we don't have a lot of time, and I understand that. So I'm not trying to give them a million excuses here, but I'm just saying a little bit of grace, just a little bit more. Um, but I do think that this Sunday matchup is going to be another one of those where they're still figuring it out. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I come back here next Wednesday morning and I say you were all right and I was wrong. Um, but we they they need to crack down they need to see how they can get in sync but I just do think that there are a lot of factors going into the first three games that I do think they will get better and I do think that the Denver Broncos will be okay but this fourth game here we're almost a quarter of a way it's crazy to see crazy to say excuse me but the fourth game here is almost a quarter of a way through the season and they do not have much time after this to get on the same page. So I think it's going to be a very telling Sunday matchup, a very telling situation. Uh, I'm very intrigued to see how we will all react to it and what we will be talking about next week. But uh, yeah, this is this is go time here. We thought the first game was go time. The last two were supposed to be easy giveaways, and they weren't easy. Yes, they were wins, but they were not easy wins. So this fourth, fourth week divisional matchup against the Las Vegas Raiders is – where things need to significantly improve. Lawrence, we need a FB. It'll give Wilson time and options to throw more downfield. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. I think there are a lot of things that will give Russell Wilson the option to throw more downfield, but yes, having that fullback, it could definitely help. I think the problem is the offensive line needs to just be I mean, they're doing a great job, don't get me wrong, but I think they need to be a little bit more in sync, and I also think we need to go against defenses that pressure a little bit less. That's my that's my take on things, but I agree. Maybe that fullback will help and give him some opportunities to throw downfield. You'd hope that the receivers were giving you know those opportunities, but you watched the game and you heard him say there's just the reason why Russell is scrambling, the reason why he's not you know releasing the balls quick is because he's got no one downfield, and that's because the – they were putting all the secondary, the 49ers were putting the secondary on each of the receivers. I mean, there was just nothing open. Um, so you're right. Maybe a fullback would give that opportunity, you know, take the the heat off of the receivers there and sneak him up there, sneak a fullback in and see what happens. It's definitely an option there. Um, it seems like our tight ends, the Denver Broncos tight ends are the ones that are really getting those targets, which is very interesting and kind of cool. But yeah, it's uh it's been a wild three weeks. Um, and again, this fourth matchup, we'll see fourth week. We'll see what, what happens. Um, 
Rodney, throw this one. I feel the game will be a close one, but I feel confident Denver will come out on top 17 to 16. These close games are a theme with the Denver Broncos, it seems, lately, the last couple weeks. Um, 17 16, that sounds doable. Uh, that would be great. Again, I think they're going to need kind of probably a fourth quarter miracle like they had on Sunday night to get that 17 16, and it might happen. Um, again, I'm still going to be rooting for them. I'm still going to be cheering them on, hoping for that win. Uh, we just have to see a significant improvement on the offensive side of things at the beginning of this game. Otherwise, I just think that the Raiders are going to have um, a big advantage being at home and being 0-3 and being very hungry. So we hope that the Denver Broncos show up starving as well on Sunday. I'm sure they are. They know what's at stake here with this first AFC West matchup. I will chat with you guys next Wednesday morning because it's going to be – antsy. I'm going to be antsy. It's going to be very, um, I don't know, intriguing to see what happens on Sunday. But again, thank you guys all for being here today. This was another episode of Beckoning the Broncos. If you are watching live, have a wonderful Sunday. If you are watching later on, I hope that you had a great Sunday. I said Sunday again. See, Sunday's in my mind. I just want it to be Sunday. I hope you all have a great Wednesday. And if you're listening later on, I hope you had a great Wednesday. Um, I'm Kim Becker. Thank you all so much for your support as always. And thank you for supporting Mile High Huddle. Make sure that you're going over to YouTube, hitting that like and subscribe button. So you never miss out on anything when it comes to the Denver Broncos and to Mile High Huddle because you know what kind of content's out there and you know how loyal everybody here is. Again, thank you all for going to the meet and greet as well. I'm sorry that I missed it. I loved seeing photos and videos, however, and loved seeing all of you that were able to show up. Um, love this community. Love you guys always. Love the Denver Broncos. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye, guys.